food sufficiency. We are confident that the proper implementation of this program will contribute significantly to the upliftment. Federal government flags off 774,000 jobs for vulnerable Nigerians. Chief of the Air Staff hosts U.S. Air Force Secretary tackling security challenges in Nigeria. Tops agenda. Plus, no 50% increase in electricity tariff. Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission clears the air. Hello and welcome to Network News at 9, reaching you live from Abuja. I'm Ian Ray John. Reading with me tonight is Hingeno John Adams in our Lagos studio, while Sadia Umar Dege will be joining us later from Sokoto. Thanks for joining us. Arrangements have been finalized by the federal government towards providing credit facilities to 5.4 million farmers across Nigeria for enhanced agricultural production in the new year. This came to light during a high-level strategic engagement between President Muhammadu Buhari and Vice President Yemi Oshibajo on the state of the nation and the way forward. State House correspondent Adam Osambo has the details. For the first time in the year 2021, President Muhammadu Buhari and Vice President Emi Oshibajo discussed at length the implementation of the Economic Sustainability Plan, especially the Mass Agriculture Scheme. 5.4 million farmers already identified and geo-referenced to their farmlands, the meeting resolved will soon be granted loans, especially those that have access to irrigation facilities towards boosting agricultural production. Also discussed is the mass housing component of the plan, which aims to construct 300,000 affordable houses across Nigeria. Vice President Oshibaju had last Saturday inspected a prototype of the housing unit at Deide, which will cost not more than 2 million naira, such that even low-income earners can participate in the mortgage scheme. Another interesting aspect of the sustainability plan, which was highlighted at the meeting, was the provision of 5 million solar home systems, which is to commence with loan disbursements to the providers this January. The planned expansion of the social investment program, ongoing disbursement of assistance to MSMEs, amongst others, which the Economic Sustainability Committee is monitoring under the VP's chairmanship, were also analyzed. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Mahmoud Buhari has expressed the conviction that unless the severe deficit in infrastructure is addressed effectively, efforts at achieving sustainable development will come to naught. This was while receiving an audience the visiting state councillor and foreign minister of the People's Republic of China, Mr. Wang Yi. Sit House correspondent Adam Musambo again has the report. President Muhammad Buhari thanked the People's Republic of China for its support to Nigeria in various ways, especially in the construction and rehabilitation of rail, road, and power infrastructure, amongst others. China, he said, is helping Nigeria to reduce its severe infrastructural deficit, for which his administration remains grateful. As the president puts it, there cannot be sustainable development without infrastructural development. President Buhari therefore pledged that Nigeria would continue to honor its obligations in the highly beneficial relationship with China, which he said is making a big difference in the country. The Chinese Foreign Minister, Mr. Wang Yi, applauded what he called the mutual trust and sound personal friendship between President Muhammad Buhari and President Xi Jinping of China. He said as China begins this year's diplomatic work with Africa, Nigeria was chosen deliberately as a first port of call. The year, he explained, marks the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Mr. Wang Yi described Nigeria as a country with great regional and international influence. Nigeria and China, he noted, trust, understand, support, and indeed value each other. The Chinese foreign minister said his country would encourage its companies to increase their investments in Nigeria while sharing experience and techniques in areas like digital economy, defense, and many others. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. 
Similarly, the Nigeria China Intergovernmental Committee has been formalized to address issues hampering mutual cooperation for development among the two nations. Foreign desk correspondent Usman Aliu now reports. The Asian superpower and the Africa's economic giant meet to formalize new deals for much more mutual benefits on cooperation. The Chinese, now a major force in building economy of Africa, is again changing history in the continent on trade, technology and loans to fund infrastructure and it says it will ensure equality in the renewed relations. That means this bilateral talks is to address many of these challenges of development which Nigeria is facing in her efforts to diversify the economy. But at present, export of agricultural produce from Nigeria to China is very difficult because of high tariff. For instance, peanut and sesame attract between 70 to 50 percent tariff, the burden which is unbearable for farmers to gain value for the produce. These are some of the issues which the Nigeria-China Intergovernmental Committee is expected to look into. Uh, we analyze the global affairs as well, the, 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 the support uh, of each other, reciprocal support in multilateral organizations, and our joint efforts to ensure uh, you know, a stable, uh, fair, uh, global system. Dealing with COVID-19 is also of interest here. With the uh, vaccine um, uh, discoveries now, um, China is also one of those countries that has been able to develop uh, vaccines uh, for COVID. And uh, so we're also engaging with China uh, to also help with regards to access uh, to vaccines. It has been 50 years of diplomatic relations between Nigeria and the People's Republic of China. But their commitments at the moment represent enormous opportunities which the two nations will enjoy at the discretion of decisions of the higher authorities. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. In other news, the extended special public works designed to empower 1,000 unemployed vulnerable persons in each of the 774 councils of the Federation has been flagged off in Abuja. Correspondent Emmanuel Ayemiro reports that the Minister of State, Labour and Employment, Festos Kiemu, who flagged off the three-month program coordinated by the National Directorate of Employment, urged beneficiaries to bear in mind the need to become self-reliant after the program. A joyful Sada too. A widow and mother of five children from Abuja Municipal Area Council of the FCT has already figured out how to utilize the startup park provided to her by government to support people like her under extended special public works. She is among the 1,000 beneficiaries in the six councils of the FCT. As you can see, look at many farming something here. Which farm? I can unable to get many things out of here. Not until I say this bag. All this will be wasted at the farm. After these three months, uh, my plan is that uh, since I I learned uh, this aluminium work with the support of this, I can save my money. You know to establish maybe small business. The program is for the maintenance of public infrastructure. Every local government is to identify any preferred project of their choice. We have, for instance, requests by certain local governments to say, look, we are, they are going to provide cups of paints for us, but we will get the 1,000 persons to paint their primary schools. Among the 1,000 persons, they are not just itinerant workers who are, who are unskilled. We may have amongst them carpenters and the like. For us at the NDE, we are confident that the proper implementation of this program will contribute significantly to the upliftment and provision of soccer to unemployed Nigerians. 
apart from the transparent and proper documentation of all participants already captured by designated banks with supervisors appointed in all electoral wards of the country, the concern raised is the exit strategy of the program. The extended special public work starts from January the 5th and will last to 4th day of April 2021. Emmanuel Aimeo, NTA News. Now, joining me live in the studio to shed more light on the extended special public works as the Minister of State, Labour and Employment, Festus Kiamo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so let's uh, begin. The program is expected to run for three months. What is the plan for these uh, trainees after the three months program? Well, after the three months program, we are thinking of different exit strategies. There are proposals on the table, uh, but that is secondary to us. Now, the primary duty is to engage them in the maintenance of public infrastructure. Uh, before I answer your question, the main task now is to ensure that every 1,000 persons we have selected from every local government is fully engaged in the maintenance of public infrastructure. Okay. And I've seen a lot of headlines uh, saying that they, they were, were engaging them to go and clear gutters. That is not correct. It is not even restrictive to a particular a particular task in a local government. Every local government has its own unique needs. Some will be traffic control, so we, you know, uh, like you said, uh, drainage clearance, or will be the maintenance of the Great Green Wall. So we participate in even patching of rural roads and on and on like that. So it depends on the need of that particular local government. So now we are collaborating as directed by Mr. President with different levels of government. State governments also have you know, access to these workers. So it's not only federal infrastructure. So long as it's government infrastructure, public infrastructure, they will be engaged to, to, to manage this and maintain this public infrastructure, even the local government at that level. Like you heard what I was saying uh, during the lunch today, some local governments said, look, they'll provide paints. They want to paint their primary schools. The problem has always been, how will they... So what you're saying in essence you know, is that they're likely to be absorbed by either the, the local government or the state government at the end of the day. Is that... Well, for those who want, even private sector may. Okay. The federal government may also think of an exit strategy where they may move them to a massive agricultural program. The government has a lot of them on the table, so they can move them. Because what we have now is a database of those who are itinerant workers, who are laborers. No government in the history of Nigeria, none, I mean none, has targeted that level of the economy, the very bottom of the economy, the laborers. These are the people when you see every day who depend on daily pay. I hope you know people survive on daily pay. Yes. They are laborers. So that brings you to my next question. Yes. How do you ascertain uh, the uh, level of these people? How are you sure that they are vulnerable? How are you sure that uh, these people do not have one source of livelihood and probably just looking for a way to get uh, government intervention? Well, that is why we localize the selection process. We did not sit there in Abuja here and assumed <clears throat> that we were able to select everybody from everywhere. We also did not go online. Most selection process, people think they are always online. Online will be that you, you cannot, first of all, get your target particip participants. The target participants in this case are people who do not even have access to internet. They are okay. laborers. Okay. So we make sure we localize the selection process. It brought a, lot, a bit of rumpus, but I, I stood my ground. And look, we have to localize it. One, we engage local religious leaders, both Christian and Muslim. We engage market leaders as the part of the selection process. We engage civil society as part of the selection process. We engage the National Union of Road Transport workers at the local level. Just to be certain you get vulnerable people. Exactly. Okay, now, so, so uh, that brings me uh, to this uh, point. Uh, today, it was flagged off in Abuja. Yes. Uh, when are we going to see it in other states? Because I'm sure... No, it's only Abuja. It was flagged off in so many states today. Okay. Kaduna flagged off today. Delta flagged off. Uh, Oshun flagged off. Or your, uh, I think Oyo will be tomorrow or so. And so, so, on and on. There are some states that were not ready, but we staggered them. Some flagging up tomorrow, some flagging up on Thursday, and by the end of the day, everybody flags up this week. Okay, so 
uh, those in FCT and those in other states, are they going to be operating at the same level? Because we've seen some programs whereby some people in certain states, you know, are privileged to get, uh, you know, certain incentives, and then those in uh, probably in the rural areas don't get such. Is it going to be no, this even? Is, this is even because it's 1,000 per local government, and they're entitled to the same stipends okay. that the government is paying all of them across board. This is the most, you know, um, even program ever because no matter the local government, no matter how rural or urban it is, 1,000 persons per local government. That is what the government is um, doing in this case. All right, thank you and well done. We hope that uh, this would improve uh, the state of these uh, vulnerable we people. We have to thank President Muhammad Buhari. This is ingenious of him. This is thoughtful of him and no president has ever thought of the poor as this president has done. All right, thank you, uh, Minister, uh, for joining us on the news tonight. Thank you. And thank you for your insights. All right, in other news, contrary to reports in some sections of the media on the approval for 50% increase in electricity tariff, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, says no approval has been granted to electricity distribution companies for such increase in the tariff order, which took effect from 1st January 2021. However, in compliance with the provisions of the Electricity Power Sector Reform Act and the nation's tariff methodology for biannual minor review, the rates for service bands A, B, C, D and E have been adjusted for 2 naira to 4 naira per kilowatt to reflect the partial impact of inflation and movement in foreign exchange rates. The Commission restates that the tariff for customers who are being served less than an average of 12 hours per day over a period of one month remain frozen and subsidized in line with the policy direction of the federal government. NEC reassures electricity consumers of its commitment to protecting them under the service-based tariff regime. Still to come, United States Air Force Secretary visits Chief of Air Staff on areas of collaboration. Listen more after the break. Please stay. Dear customer, link your Airtel number to your national identification number today. Here are easy ways you can do it. Dial star 121 star 1 hash on your Airtel line and follow the prompts on the screen. Type in your 11-digit government-approved NIN number. You will receive a confirmation message to confirm your entry. You can also visit www.airtel.com.ng forward slash NIN to link your phone number to your NIN. If you do not know your NIN, Simply dial star 346 hash to get it. No stress, no wahala. Airtel, the smartphone network. The Forestry Research Institute of Nigeria, FREEM, located in Ibado, the capital of all your state, southwest Nigeria, has been repositioned for better service delivery to its teeming clients across the globe. The institute remains undoubtedly as a farmer's research center of excellence with respect to knowledge-based forestry activities. As measured by the acquired scientific breakthrough, FREEM has demonstrated that youths, women and retirees can make millions of naira practicing low capital agriculture. These include cane, rat, rabbit, and snail farming with returns on investments regularly. Added to its feathers is a certification by NAFDAQ to the Fring Sea Tone Herbal Mixture and Remedy for the Management of COVID-19 Related Ailments as Immune Booster. The Institute is recognized by several international agencies. Recently, it got approval for three biosphere reserves in Nigeria by the UNESCO, MAP, and ICC. Fring has come to stay. The future is very bright in making the forest profitable. Disinfect and protect your home with Jig. Jig kills 99.9% .9 of illness causing germs, disinfect floors, kitchen and bathroom surfaces, and wash white cloths, towels, and dishcloths with Jig bleach. Just Jig it. Disinfect and protect your home with Jig. Jig kills 99.9% .9 of illness causing germs, disinfect floors, kitchen and bathroom surfaces, and wash white cloths towels and dishcloths with chick bleach just jackets season's greetings from the national union of road transport workers and the federal road safety corps we are reminded that the coronavirus is still out there be sure to observe all laid down protocols by the ncdc by observing social distancing washing your hands regularly with soap and water using alcohol based and sanitizer regularly wear a face mask in public places remember the life is precious as you go about your daily activities in 2021 obey all traffic rules and regulations do not drink and drive 
drive. Make sure your vehicle is in roadworthy condition. Do not overspeed or overtake recklessly. Please stay safe. Happy New Year and enjoy the best of 2021. This message is from Al Haji Tajuddin Ibikule Barua, National President, National Union of Road Transport Workers, announcer. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Muhammad Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. The new year begins. We here at NTA cannot help but look back on a challenging year that has been filled with many lessons. The most important of all being a renewed gratitude for the continuous support of our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, businesses and manufacturers, and you, the viewers. As we cross the finish line together, the celebration of new beginnings would simply be incomplete without you there. And we look forward to sharing the coming year with you. Here's to an excellent year ahead. Thank you for staying. Nigeria and the United States have long been close allies and those ties have further been strengthened with the visit of the U.S. Secretary of Air Force, Barbara Barrett, calling on the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, to discuss more areas of collaboration. Defense correspondent Najato Tijani brings us details. Echoing the hopes the American people have for Nigeria's progress, the 25th Secretary of the United States Air Force, Barbara Barrett, accompanied by members of the U.S. delegation, including Ambassador Mary Beth Leonard, highlights equipment operations and maintenance, among other areas of collaboration with the Nigerian Air Force. We're conscious of challenges um, that the, the country faces, especially in the north, um, and we share a, part, a, a laundry list or a shopping list of ways that we can uh, enhance our relationship through equipment, through training, um, and through a lot of additional opportunities for both operations and maintenance. We are excited that we are making substantial progress in terms of uh, acquisition of the Super Tucano aircraft. We are also very excited that our officers and men are in the U.S. And they are making substantial progress. Responsible for organizing, training, equipping, and the welfare of U.S. Air and Space Forces, Secretary Barbara Barrett, herself a veteran instrument-rated pilot, says Nigeria's development has the potential to stabilize the sub-Saharan region, with the Nigerian Air Force expected to play a more critical role. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. The current efforts of the federal government in tackling security challenges across crisis zones in the country as fast yielding desired results and gradually restoring confidence in the people. Citizens' action for good governance has taken stock of the progress recorded in the past years and fostering values that will engender greater support to the security agencies in winning the war against insecurity. Abu Bakr Usman Akwanga reports. Nigeria's history in the year 2020 will be incomplete without the mention of chain of events that threw part of the country into state of restlessness. The assessment, therefore, is not unconnected with the reason behind the effort that stabilizes the country and to advocate continued support to Nigerian gallant troops in the front line. This is the best time for Nigerians of good intentions, especially among the downtrodden, to rally around our most greatest support. 
for all our Ghanaian security forces in their determined effort to subdue and eliminate crime and criminalities. Citizens' action for good governance urged religious leaders to desist from making uncharitable and inflammatory statements that will undermine the unity and security of the country. Rather than encourage Nigerians to be good citizens who are law-abiding, calling Nigeria a faith state is as good as saying the religious leaders have totally failed in their responsibilities to groom their followers to be good citizens. This government has risen on several occasions to the challenges, especially in its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. The organization calls for citizens' cooperation and dedication to peace-building process, especially in northeast and northwest regions of the country. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. The Southeast Governor's Forum has condemned in strong terms the video in circulation on social media alleging forceful eviction of Fulani headsmen in Eboyin State. The chairman of the forum and governor of Eboyin State, David Umahi, in a press briefing after their virtual meeting in Abakaliki, said the video, which aims at causing tension in the country, has no truth in it. Kingsley Okuru reports. Governor Omahi, while presenting a communique after the visual meeting by the forum said, there is no truth in the circulated video which portrays the people of Ebony State as not being accommodating and chasing his men out of the state. While urging the masses to discontinue the message in the fake video, Governor Omahi assured other tribes in the southeast of adequate security in the zone. A politician, as we have intelligence gathering, went to put a voice and say, that is uh, the boys that are chasing away the helpsmen from a boy state. Such a video went very wide and was causing panic in other parts of the country. That is very, very much uncalled for. I want the public to discountenance it and the, the governor's forum condemn this act. However, the forum called on leaders of the zone to rise against acts of criminality being perpetrated by desperate politicians in the area. So we do everything as governors of Southeast to, you know, ensure that all our people are protected, the security agencies, and the, all the people from other regions that are living with us. Governor Omahi emphasized that the governors of the zone will continue to support President Muhammad Buhari's government in the interest of the zone and that of the country by extension. In Abakaliki, Kingsley Okoro, NTA News. Now heading to the courts, Governor Gordon Abasaki of Edo State has opened his defense in a case of alleged forgery of certificate instituted against him by the Oil Progressives Congress, APC, at the Federal High Court, Abuja. Austin Ayebe reports. Defense counsel K. Moza opening his defense in the case tendered the original primary school certificate of Governor Godwin Obasaki obtained in 1971, secondary school in 1973, and higher school certificate issued in 1976 by West African Examination Council WAEC, as well as a degree certificate from University of Ibadan and master's degree from Bayes University in Abuja. Other documents, including from EC9, were equally tendered and admitted in evidence. The first defense witness, who is the chairman of Edo Law Reform Commission Charity, Ogubaren, giving evidence to the court that absence of the signature of the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibadan and date of issuance on a photocopy of the degree certificate attached to form ECN submitted to INEC by the governor was an error from photocopier as he personally went to make the photocopy. The second witness, the deputy registrar from University of Ibadan, Abayo Samuel Ajayi, led in evidence confirmed several documents in the matter which include admission, graduation, application application for collection of certificates, an original degree certificate issued to Governor Godwin Obasaki by the university. Tansu to APC, Akim Ulujumi objected to the admissibility of some of the documents but said will argue them in his final written address. The defense team said they have five witnesses to call in the matter and hope to close their case before Thursday this week. From the Federal High Court Abuja, Austin and Yebe, NT News. And still in court, the magistrate court sitting in Abuja has ordered that better welfare facilities should be provided for the convener of Revolution Now protest, Omoyele Shawari, and four other defendants at the Force Criminal Investigation Department offices in Abuja. 
pending the application for bail. Olabo Diarewa reports that the order is sequel to the complaint by the defendants that they were being inhumanly treated at the Kuji Correctional Facility where they were being kept. Omo yele shuwe, Peter Williams, Soyaolu Jumo, Imane Bulus and Damilari Adeola are facing a three count charge of alleged conspiracy, unlawful assembly, and incitement of the public to disorder by embarking on a public protest on New Year's Eve. At the resumption of trial, Defense Counsel Masha Abubaka filed a formal application for bail pending trial, predicating this on the alleged inhuman treatment his client suffered while in the custody of the Kuji Correctional Center. The application for bail was opposed by the prosecution counsel, James Indachaba. Taking into account the health and comfort of the defendants who are still presumed innocent, the court ordered that they should be transferred to the facility of the First Criminal Investigation Department in Abuja for them to access better welfare. The, uh, for now, I don't think we have any serious cause for concern. Although we pleaded with that to give us a shorter date because, the, I mean, our application was comprehensive enough. Well, we objected to that order because we don't have the facility. We don't have an adequate facility to keep the defendant in our custody. We don't have that facility. The presiding magistrate, Mabel Shegumbelo, has ordered the parties to furnish the court with further legal authorities in support of their arguments for bail and adjourn the matter to Friday, January 8, 2021, when the court is expected to rule on the bail application of the defendants. In Abuja, Labadarewa, NT News. Practitioners in the legal profession in Nigeria have been told to brace up more to the challenges of improving justice dispensation in the country. Retired Chief Judge of the AFCT High Court, Justice Ishak Belu, made a call at a special validatory court session to mark his retirement from the judiciary. Femi Okeo has the story. series of events lined up to celebrate Justice Ishak Bello as a judicial officer and chief judge of the FCT were cancelled due to the COVID-19 situation in the country. But the formal exit through the valedictory court session went on with professional colleagues including the chief justice of Nigeria and traditional representatives assembling to show respect to the positive changes which had been instituted in the last five and a half years of Justice Ishak Ishak Bello being the chief judge of the FCT High Court. It was therefore a forum to call on the legal profession in Nigeria to re-engineer justice dispensation in the country in view of the experiences of the past. No one is an island and there of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. I came to appreciate these ideas. Various people have been part of the story of my life. Justice Ishak Bello's tenure as chief judge of the FCT, even though just for about five years, some say would mark the end of an era in the court. They say the activities that impacted on the improvement of dispensation of justice, not just in the FCT but in Nigeria generally, were so many. From the FCT High Court, Femi Okewo, NT News. Let's pause here now and uh, go to Lagos where Hingino has the next set of reports. Hello, Hingino. It's up here. Hello, Ianre. Talking health here. In the absence of a cure for COVID-19, experts say the vaccine is the most important option for prevention. This report takes a look at receptiveness of Nigerians towards the COVID-19 vaccine as the nation awaits its allocation. In 2019, when COVID-19 broke out in Wuhan, China, the world did not predict that it was going to be a protracted global challenge that will bring the planet to its knees. As the virus violently dug its claws on nations, threatening human existence and economies, scientists were busy in laboratories seeking solutions. 
Their labor produced the vaccines currently in circulation in some Western countries. This breakthrough, however, did not come without controversies, most of which border on the viability of the COVID-19 vaccine. I don't really believe that uh, it's, it's uh, really a vaccine that can prevent the COVID-19. Once I'm sure that it's genuine and it's from right source, why not? I can take it. Although the approved vaccines are being applied, medical experts say researches are ongoing. My institution, uh, as have, we have said before, in order for uh, uh, involved in ex experimental uh, trial of um, our own local vaccine, using the Nigerian strains. There should also be a check on it as to regarding its safety, effectiveness and the quality. There have been claims by many about the side effects of the vaccine. Experts say when the vaccine gets to Nigeria, its safety and efficacy will be ascertained before it is administered to citizens. Let's now turn our attention to infrastructure. There are indications that the repair works on the third mainland bridge will be completed ahead of schedule. Dotun Oguyemi reports that this is as a result of increased pace of work by the contractors as nine out of the 12 identified expansion joints have been replaced. Daily, the third mainland bridge makes its relevance known, but the number of vehicles that ply the route to and fro. Expectedly, the news of any closure or impending closure by government sends a shock wave of anxiety to Lagos residents. And for months now since the bridge has been under repair, especially under the second phase of work, motorists have lamented the disappearance of diversionary signs and lack of traffic management personnel. Kodabro uh, is spending a lot of money in replacing the traffic signs. As we are talking, we move here in November, more than four times the contractor has replaced the diversion signs and they keep on removing the diversion signs. So what they are using it for is what we don't know. We are only appealing to them that uh, nobody should go there and remove it. It's for us to, to, to give information to people that are using the road and also to prevent accidents. It was observed, however, that there were increased number of traffic personnel along the corridors of the alternative routes like Kostain, Ido and Ebutemeta. In Lagos, Dotson Ogunyemi, NTA News. It's now time for another break. Network News continues shortly. Dear customer, link your Airtel number to your national identification number today. Here are easy ways you can do it. Dial star 121 star 1 hash on your Airtel line and follow the prompts on the screen. Type in your 11-digit government-approved NIN number. You will receive a confirmation message to confirm your entry. You can also visit www.airtel.com.ng forward slash NIN to link your phone number to your NIN. If you do not know your NIN, Simply dial star 346 hash to get it. No stress, no wahala. Airtel, the smartphone network. Ah, Helen Paul. Hello, madam. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, madam. The regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapix 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains remover. Hapix sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergent and Bleach. Wow! Now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah! <laughs> now that she's part of the mission, the next house is yours.
know that 35% of every girl, child and women are raped on a daily basis. Some are killed in the process. Some take their lives in shame. Others remain emotionally dead for life. It is sad. This culture is not art. Definitely not African. How did we allow bad culture to infiltrate and take over? Even if you lack fear for the law, what of fear of God? And you, why do you cover up rape acts when it happens? Remember, a problem share is a problem half solved. Never cover any rape act because a rapist is a murderer. It could be you or your loved ones next. Women must be treated like the prize gen they are. Say no to rape. Glad to have you back. Now, a bit in the pandemic, COVID-19 infections are increasing daily in the country, especially among health workers and core members. Chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, who revealed this at Tuesday's briefing in Abuja, appealed to state governments to justify COVID-19 allocations they have received by increasing testing. Mitari Ipe reports. The PTF, mass travels and non challenge to COVID-19 protocols during the Yuletide are reflecting in the country's daily statistics. More worrisome is the growing infections among young Nigerians. In continuation of the NYSE engagement, out of the 35,419 in batch B, 731 tested positive compared to 108 recorded during the batch A. When we compare ourselves with three weeks ago, the number of new cases per week has tripled. We appeal to all states to increase testing to enable us to know exactly where we are. Meanwhile, vaccines are due to arrive the country soon. We expect to receive approximately 100,000 doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine by the end of January. The PTF appeals to health professionals, the media and opinion shapers in the country to educate Nigerians on the safety of vaccines and the need to disregard conspiracy theories. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. The Akwaibom State Police Commissioner, Amir Geme Andrew, has ordered for an immediate investigation into a petition by Mrs. Deborah Achibong, aged 41, a mother of Don Davis, in Yobong Achibong, a student of Deeper Life High School, Idoro Road, Uyu, alleging that her son, Master Don Davis, in Yobong, was inhumanly treated, sexually molested, and suffered starvation against Mrs. Ndidi, Solomon, and three others. A statement by Aquaibom Police Public Relations Odeko Markdon indicates that the CP were enjoining all parties involved to exercise restraint pending the outcome of the investigation has assured the good people of Aquaibom State that no stone will be left unturned in unraveling the truth. In other news, self-employment has been identified as the solution to the most talked about unemployment bedeviling the country, especially among youths and women who are the vulnerable group in the society. It's against this backdrop the Senator representing Adamawa Central at the Red Chamber, Aisha Tudahiru Ahmed Binani, is collaborating with National Directorate of Employment, NDA, to train youths and women in about 368 different skills to make them productive members of the society. Bekusu Abubakar takes up the report from here. 
Our central a metropolitan senatorial zone with a large population comprises of seven local government areas of the state. Insecurity and criminality kept increasing by day in the senatorial zone because of unemployment, especially among the youths, which defied all attempts to be reduced to BRS minimum. Having realized the enormity of this ugly situation on the future leaders, the senator representing the zone, Aisha to Ahmad Dahiru Binani, in collaboration with National Director of Employment, NDE, has trained 1,668 youths and women in various skills with the view to making them self-employed. To mark their graduation, the trainees were each presented with startup kits of particular trait they have already been trained upon. Okay, I'll open a tailoring shop and start sewing. I will sew people's clothes and they will pay me. Well, by the grace of God, as long as I establish myself, I will train so many people. Um, by the special God, grace of God, I'll open shop. I will start my business with it. Senator Aisha Tubinani said it is her desire to fight insecurity and criminality in a softer way. She urged the beneficiaries to make judicious use of the facilities, not only for their personal benefit, but the generality of the society. This will go a long way in assisting our people to not only be self-reliant, but use it to pay school fees, hospital bills, in addition to daily sustainers. Various speakers on the occasion lauded the effort of the lawmaker and asked others to emulate. In Yola, Bilkisu Abubakar. So saying that change is permanent played out in the Ministry of Information and Culture when the three-month journey of Nebulisa Anako, permanent secretary, concluded with the change of God. Kenneth Nani reports. A warm handshake and a glowing smile define the historic moment as outgoing permanent secretary Nebulisa Anako hands over notes to his successor, Dr. Adora Ifoma Anyamutako. I learned a lot of this and uh, I enjoyed my working period here. It was like a big family. Also, uh, within the period, I tried to put in my best. I look forward to very good uh, working relationship with all of you. Just as you've uh, cooperated with my predecessor, I also want you to cooperate with me as we move uh, the ministry to greater heights. In all of these, Director of Human Resources Management of the ministry summarizes feelings of the staff. The watchword here is cooperation, emphasized by both parties as a tool to build and consolidate on the gains already achieved in the ministry. Kenneth Nanim, NCA News. Our last port of call tonight is Sokoto, where Sadia will feed us with more stories. Sadia. Yere, glad to have you join us. The federal government is to distribute relief materials to more than 3,600 households affected by flood in Zamfara State. Director General National Emergency Management Agency, Nema Muhammad al Haji Muhammad, said that this at the distribution of the assistance in the Ngudu local government area of the state. Halu Muhammad Umar now reports. 3,663 households were affected by flood in 13 local government areas of Zamfara State. This prompted the federal government through the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to provide the relief in form of food items, building and clothing materials, among other household items to the victims, with a view to cushioning the effect of the disaster. Distribution of the items which started recently with victims in Gusau local government area is being conducted by officials of the National Emergency Management Agency with the support of their counterparts from the Zamfara State Emergency Management Agency and other stakeholders. My message to them is to make judicious use of these items. Alhamdulillah, as we are seeing today, the Onema responded positively under the leadership of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Bahari. About 100 victims of flood in Bungudu local government area were among the latest beneficiaries of the relief materials. 
I am grateful to the federal government for this assistance. It will assist me greatly. I feel fine today. And I'm friend to our president. I wish him good luck and we enjoy the way he assists us. The distribution of the items is built to be extended to other affected local government areas in the state. In Gusau, Haliru Muhammad Umar, NTA News. Now, the federal government's COVID-19 special intervention to boost economic activities in the country is manifesting through road rehabilitation in Kebbi State. Sheikh Mohammed Detti reports that this will enhance transportation in the area. The report. Suru Ingaski Water Road is the alternative route for commuters from Sokoto and Kebbi states heading to southwestern states due to the deteriorating condition of Kontogwara Jaba Road. But the alternative is having its fair share of challenges due to increasing traffic, which led to its dilapidation. To change the narrative and bring soccer to commuters, the Federal Road Maintenance Agency embarked on rehabilitation of the road. Repaired with a uh, lateritic swap base, storm base course, MC1, and even asphaltic wearing course. This is in addition to the claiming of watchtower portions of bridge number three on Aragongubi Road affected by flood with protective wall and storm pitching extension of Lela Bayeldu Road from 11 to 15 kilometers with four additional culverts and surface stressing of 2.5 kilometers as well as continued stretching of Aragongubi Road with asphalt overlay. Other interventions include strengthening of Brineke Bijega Road, which include patching of portholes and asphalt overlay of 1.7 kilometers, as well as similar efforts on Brineke Bijegarod border road. The projects have been completed, while approval has been given for more projects and rehabilitation of failed section of Tuga Bridge damaged by flood. There are a lot of uh, portholes where I saw FEMA now taking care of them. I am very delighted to see uh, this development. According to the road users, the agency's intervention impacted positively on socio-economic activities of the people of Kebbi State. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad Dati, NTA News. Network News will continue after this message. Please stay tuned. Gratitude to God for a life well spent with the family of Sir Joseph Onora Omubiko of Ezemajwa Kindred Umudioka Oka Anambra State announced the departure of our beloved husband, father, grandfather, great grandfather, cousin, uncle, and brother, Sir Chief Joseph Onora Omubiko, Chie Ive Meluma Otochala Ezemajwa, age 95. Burial arrangements Wednesday, 6 January 2021, 5 p.m. Service of song at his compound, number 8, Ezudu Street. Street Akoele Square, Umudioka Village. Thursday, 7 January 2021, 6.30 a.m. Body leaves Apex Mortuary Oka to his compound, lying in state at his compound, 10 a.m. Funeral service at our Savior's Anglican Church, Emma's House Complex, Athers Road, Oka. Interment follows immediately at his compound, Friday, 8 and Saturday, 9 January 2021. Condolence visits continue. Sunday, 10 January 2021, outing and Thanksgiving service at our Savior's Anglican Church, Oka. Announcer Chief Charles Namde Ongbiko Obuewi Onodugo for the family. Welcome back. The death has been announced of the Sarah King Gabas of Adamawa and Waziri of Garakida, Malam Dauda Burma. He was aged 80. Before his death, he was an elder statesman, an astute politician, a former Minister of Education and one-time presidential aspirant. Late Dauda Burma was a patriotic Nigerian who believed in the unity of the country. It's been built. Mm. I feel very bad because I could see how people worked, interfaced with each other, struggled with each other in a very friendly, competitive way to get us to independence. Malam Dauda Burma passed on Tuesday, January 5th, 2020 at his Asukuru home in Abuja. He survived by his family. President Muhammadu Buhari has reacted to the demise of the former Minister of Education and Sarah King Gabas of Adamawa, Alhaji Dauda Burma. 
President Buhari, while expressing his condolences, described Dauda Burma as one of the finest and most distant politicians of our time, a disciplined and respectable politician who gave politics a good image through personal examples. The President prayed Allah to forgive his shortcomings, reward his good deeds with paradise, and grant his family the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss. The death has occurred of Hajia Barira Umar, the mother of Umar Sani, ex spokesperson of the former Vice President Namadi Sambo. Hajia Barira, who died at the age of 93, passed on in the early hours of today. The late Hajia was a community leader, an entrepreneur, and a philanthropist. She survived by the Umar Sani and four grandchildren. And that's Network News tonight. Many thanks for being a part of it. Please remember, the fight against rape and rapists will not end until that evil act comes to an end. Good night.